I love Harry Potter. I'm sure everyone who grew up with the books does too. Should. Yeah, <laughs> you should. So we decided to do a fun project on visualizing some data that we could find with Harry Potter, which as you can imagine, there's so much. I mean, even after all the seven books released and all the seven movies, there's Pottermore, and now there are gonna be two games and like all this other stuff. So, well, this is the criteria that we had. We had to have a Flask app, which had a bunch of API routes that we used, um, that we used for our database. D3 to build our visualizations. Uh, JavaScript library, which we used was charts.js, and a user-driven interaction, and at least three different views. Okay, and so to do that, the technologies that we used were beautiful soup to scrape some data. We used pandas to clean up the data, some of the data that we scraped. Uh, the Flask app, uh, we built our database using MongoDB, and obviously, obviously some HTML and CSS. So our main inspiration was the largest vocabulary and hip hop website that we went over in class. Um, so you know, the visualization with the fading in, fading out, you can select different categories for what you wanna see. Another one that we found, well, that Sean found, was the LOTR project, which had a bunch of visualizations on different things, like sentiment on the books, you know, characters, uh, work, unique words, and things like that. Okay, so the first part that we had was uh, the data collection. So this was probably one of the most tedious parts of the, <laughs> of the project, just because what we did was we wanted to create a timeline of characters, so when a character first shows up to when they last show up. So what we did was, Paul and I and a little bit Sean, we mostly remembered kind of which book they were in, and then we used this website to find which chapter they were mentioned in. So for like Harry, he's mentioned in the very first chapter of the very first book, and he's there till the epilogue of the seventh book. But people like Snape, he's not, he doesn't show up until like chapter six or seven in the first book, and he dies in the very last chapter, but before the epilogue of the seventh book. Sorry, oh, should I mention spoilers? spoilers at the beginning too. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, yeah, there gonna be some spoilers. Yeah, leave now if you don't want to hear any more spoilers. <laughs> it's pretty much too late. It is, it is. I mean, if you haven't read the books by now, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so, and then the second part was uh, Sean. Um, so, this is. Uh, so what Sharani was explaining was a lot of manual data entry, stuff that wasn't available anywhere, which chapter they first showed up on. But we also wanted to combine some character information that is available online. So we found a Harry Potter wiki site. And so uh, based on our manual entry, we had a bunch of characters. I loaded that into pandas uh, and then looped through them, scraping the Harry Potter site, adding more uh, character information, what house they're in, what uh, species, different things like that. And then, if we go into the next slide, and then uh, pushing that into our MongoDB. Um, and both of those were actually from the same uh, cell in uh, our Jupyter notebook that was 170 lines <laughs> that did everything all at once. So. <laughs> So just a quick side note, we had, um, so you can see the database, uh, the, uh, the collection name is full. So this would be like the full timeline from when they first appeared in the series to when they last appeared in the series. Uh, we had separate collections for each, each book also, which we wanted to go more in depth with, but which is part of our future plan. Okay, and now we have a quick demonstration of our website. I don't know how quick it's gonna be. Okay. <laughs> All right. Quick thing. That HP logo right there with the lightning bolt, built by Sean. D3. So if you made that. Yeah. Are you commissioning your work? If you need any graphic, if you have any graphic design needs, Sean will do it. I mean, that, yeah. that took me one hour. <laughs> All right, so uh, on to the visualization. So we, uh, like Sharani said, we obviously wanted to emulate the Lord of the Rings project site. Um, if you haven't seen that, go to it if you're a fan. It's it's really cool. And the and the rap visualization is, as well. So how did we do that? So we kind of talked about the kind of things that we wanted to visualize, and one of the first things we came up with was maybe a timeline for different characters, and we thought, hey, let's do 40 different characters. So uh, we went through a couple different um, iterations of the actual visual until we came upon this once it loads. Oh, I gotta zoom out. All right, so 
we have a, uh, when I say timeline, I mean, this is from the time that the character first entered, uh, from the time they were first seen to the time they were last seen. Um, and, and by scene, we mean physically described as being there. Otherwise, a lot of characters would have shown up, like James and Lily, who, again, spoiler alert, dead before the book starts. I don't know if that was necessary. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Still, so, so because we're doing it like this, you can imagine there's a lot of uh, interesting things that are going to come out of this just because of how we're kind of delegating timelines. So if you go to something that's something, something like a small character, so if someone shows up, say, twice, maybe once in book one and maybe once in book six, they have a long character arc. Um, so, but, but they might not be a main character. So you'll see someone like Dobby. House elf, super loyal. I love him. He's a tiny little guy, very magical. Uh, he's right here, um, kind of high up the list, but then you'll go, everyone knows who Dumbledore is. He's all the way down here. And that's for specific reasons. I'm not going to go into spoilers on that one, but, um, but still, it I looks like... I will later on. Okay, well, there you go. That's true. Uh, well, it looks like, you know, from if you're looking at this, it might look like Dobby's a more important character than Dumbledore. That's just the way we kind of did it. Um, and it's really, it's interesting in itself. It's more kind of visualiz visualization of character arcs more than a timeline, I guess. Um, Anyway, so um, what we have here is a, a timeline for not 40 characters, but I think 108? Yes. 108, maybe? I don't know. Um, and then for each character, they have an avatar right here. Uh, you kind of scroll over, and it'll give you first appearance, last appearance, their house, blood status, um, and their species. And then uh, we have GIFs across the top here. Yes, I'm Team GIF. Um, and they have, uh, they're just kind of time markers for where in the books they, these people actually appeared. So we did not build those. Yeah, we did, <laughs> we did, we did we not did. build those. Um, and then on the left side here, we have some buttons with predefined categories. So this first one is uh, the main characters, or what we consider to be the main characters. And then we have a couple other ones. We have each of the Hogwarts houses, so Gryffindor. We'll go to Slytherin here. Uh, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff. Uh, I think this one is uh, Hogwarts staff. Uh, we've got Death Eaters, the Order of the Phoenix, Ministry of Magic, um, and then some muggles. It's the Dursleys, <laughs> the worst. And then uh, up here we have a character search um, that we're going to live demo, which is always a great idea. So uh, some shout out some character names. We probably have them. We have a lot of characters. So anyone? Character. Harry Potter characters. Who? Sirius Black. Sirius Black. Someone request Umbridge, please. So we'll add, yeah, we'll add Sirius. I'll put... I'll put Umbridge up there because her picture is nice. Oh, spelled it wrong. Y'all, uh, just like zoom in on that picture real quick, that avatar. Will do. Can you see it? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> is it, was that your doing or? That's my idea. Yes. Nice. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Any more suggestions? Lupin. Previous Lupin. Anyway, you can just add anyone, they'll show up. And uh, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the search function. And then I think that's uh, basically all I had to talk about on the timeline here. I'm gonna turn it over to Sean. He's gonna talk a little bit about the, uh, the sentiment charts and analysis that we did. Uh, another data collection uh, process that we went through is actually downloading the full text for all seven books. And I went through and split that by by page, so I was able to analyze the sentiment throughout the books by page. Um, this right here is a 100 page moving average that resets at the beginning of each book, so like right in between here and here, uh, you can see it's just flat, and that's to delineate so you can see how trends uh, appear over the full series, but also book by book. The most obvious one is just how much more negative the sentiment gets as you go through the books, especially the last one and the first one are very extreme. Um, and with the sixth book being an outlier, and it was more positive than some of the books before that until the very end, and then which started uh, the last book and plus a few chapters are almost exclusively negative. And I also did the same thing by character. So if we go to Harry Potter here, this is, it's a little bit of a different chart. Um, rather than a moving average where above the zero axis and below the zero axis represent positive and negative, this more shows their path up and down. So 
even though here is still positive, this downslope means that it was a rough time for Harry right there. Um, <laughs> and this entire series should just be. Like yeah, and this Harry is on 94% of pages, so this pretty much represents the entire series. And in fact, the 6% of pages that he's not on, the sentiment adds up to almost exactly zero, as if when he's not there, it's just passing time and setting up the next event, and <laughs> nothing really happens without Harry. But as we go uh, to the other characters, Ron and Her Hermione are in the book about half the time. They have very similar uh, arcs as Harry, but if you'll see, his is a little more volatile, where theirs is more smooth. They don't go through quite as many as the ups and downs, but, it's, but they're with each other a lot, so it looks the same. Um, whereas someone like Dumbledore, it looks a lot different, especially <laughs> Voldemort and Snape. What's that Dumbledore falling down there towards the uh, three quarters of the graph? Can you go to like, Dumbledore? What happens there? Right here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so um, right, right here, um, he's mostly positive throughout. He has a few dips, but... Right. <laughs> throughout the last book plus a few chapters, it is a steep downward slope and then a consistent downward slope afterwards. And um, there's a major event that happens right here that you can guess. But it affects more than just Dumbledore. If you look at Harry, the same trend. Steep downward slope, and his is still steep afterwards. Uh, Snape, his... Uh, graph is a little shrunk, but it's the same trend right here in the same chapter. It's steep and then a steady downslope. But some of the other characters, there's still a downslope after there throughout the books, um, but it's not as steep as Harry, Snape, and Dumbledore, and that's because that event is... They're the three most important characters in that event, and it's just cool to see that visualized. Um, <laughs> that was well tiptoed. <laughs> Has anyone here not read the books? <laughs> so one one other um, that was just an example of me looking at the charts after we produced them and noticing something and marrying it back to events and seeing that the sentiment really does follow that. Um, another interesting takeaway I had is Ron and Hermione are both in the book about half of the time and mostly together. Um, and you'll look, their paths are very similar, but Ron's is a little bit just shifted upwards versus Hermione's. And that's because in the first three books, this portion right here, uh, Hermione's in it, on 44% of pages, whereas Ron is on uh, 56%. And he, just in that time period, he's accumulating more positive sentiment. But from this point forward, if we shifted it to the same scale, it would look almost identical. And from the fourth book on, they're, on, they're both on 49% of pages. So the first three books versus the last four, there's a clear difference in uh, just... Uh, sorry, um, slipping up. But in the last four books, they're almost always together and they're active, their activity level is the same, whereas it's a little bit different in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last visualization that we had was a family tree of the uh, Potter Weasley families. Um, yeah. I'm sure. Zoom in a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, so. It was just, uh, this This was not that hard to do, it was using SVGs, but it was just tedious, as you can imagine. There's a lot of different characters, and um, it just positioning them was a bit tough. And like the, unfortunately, couldn't find a real picture for Charlie since he's not in the movies, so he stays being a cartoon. Um, and you can hover over them, and it gives you some information like full name, their blood status, the house that they were in, um, and their occupation. Unfortunately, some characters don't have anything. The only reason we know that Percy's wife is Audrey is because of the wikia. And again, you know, 
Gryffindor, we're not told much about their love status, and unfortunately, some characters, sorry again, spoiler alert, Man. keep spoiling, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, you got, you got some hovers. And the last thing, just a real quick, about us, Paige, our houses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick to the presentation to wrap up here. Um, so, we had, we started um, with the idea to have that timeline uh, as a full timeline and then have it for each book. So we actually have API routes for every book, for everyone's timeline within that book itself. That ended up being, the, the timeline itself became a, a gigantic project. So that's something that we're going to do in the future. Um, there's obviously a bunch of other things. Um, I think we obviously want to point out or at least do some sort of a visual representation on the timeline of which characters are more important than others. Maybe the opacity can change depending on how many pages they're on. Um, broader search functions, more visualizations. We all have ideas how to continue building this. I mean, the, Eld the Lord of the Rings project was so expansive and we, we really liked it, so we wanted to do something similar. So. Yeah. It's, it, I would recommend looking at the Lord of the Rings project. There's a lot of visualizations and it's really cool. And the uh, last thing here is we're going to have swag soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Coming soon. Because it's just cool, too cool not to use just everywhere we can. But no, uh, that's a joke. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's it for us. <laughs> Go ahead. So as someone who's seen all the movies, read all the books like three, four times each, yeah. I have to say I love this project. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, when you guys went to the sentiment analysis for the characters, now, how did you, like, where would you source that info from? Okay, so um, we, we found online where the, we found uh, text for each of the books, and so I looped through a book, and uh, there was page numbers, so I split the text based on the page number. I could talk about how I did that for about an hour um, because that is a lot. It, maybe it sounds hard, but if it doesn't, it's a lot harder than it sounds because of splitting on a variable string. Um, but after that, I used the Vader sentiment analysis and each, each page analyzes uh, sentiment. So I just had a full list of the entire series by page of the sentiment. And then by character, I, I also looped through the, the text that was split by page and did a search function on a few different things like Harry, we could just search for Harry. Um, some characters, you have to just search. You, you, maybe they're called by their last name. I allowed for one of those. But like the Weasleys, you can't search for just Weasley and because yeah. it'll Cause count like all of them. them. So I basically just had a, a list for each character that's zeros and ones and whether they're on the page or not. So then for their sentiment, um, kind of did list manipulation, multiplied that by the sentiment list. So there, uh, it was a list of the sentiment on that page if they were on it or zero if they weren't on the page. And then uh, something else to, for the characters since it adds up rather than being a, a line like that, just adding up as we go. Yeah, that's really cool. I love how <laughs> it, you actually see, like, because the books start out really lighthearted and then yeah, they get exactly. really dark. Yeah. yeah. So it's, like, cool to see how, like, when it gets to the really dark parts, and I know exactly what each one of those are because yeah. I've read it. But yeah. it's cool how it just dips, like, immediately, and I'm like, okay, that's when that character came into play. Or, yeah, yeah. and you can see, <laughs> like you said, in the beginning, it's really positive. The it's worst first, character man. in the book in the beginning yeah. looks neutral because everywhere it's positive, but on the pages he's yeah. on, it's just neutral, which really means <laughs> he was a negative character. But then finally, at the end of the book, that doesn't really show his... It looks like he's going from neutral to negative, but it really conveys how she wrote the sentiment. Yeah. Yeah, 
guys going to spend the last hour talking about the show? This is my friend. Yeah, yeah so um, I, I, when I started doing the D3 for the timeline, I ended up, I built off a Stack Overflow answer that used the old version of D3 that's on an unsecured server. So you can't put that on Heroku because it doesn't like let you use a source that's not secured. And I could not find a, a source for the script that was, and it didn't work if I was doing it locally, all this different stuff. So eventually I'll rejigger it so that we can put it on Heroku and then, and uh, and put it up. But anyway, that was one of the difficulties. Uh, uh, I had a question on how you talked about the three I know you said you could talk for an hour about it, but I was wondering if you could just give us like a kind of <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think you have that enough if you need both. Okay. Um, it's a Do mess of a notebook, <laughs> and I didn't want to expose even my group mates to it. I need to organize that um, where we can share. But So uh, between each page in the text documents we found, there was page one with a, with a slash and then the book name. And... Then after that page, page two. So I had to take the full text of a book and split by page one, blah, blah, blah. But I made that one variable. So um, I did one split, and then I have the first page, and then the other element is page two through 300. So I saved the first page, added it to an empty array, um, and then saved the rest of the book as my new text to split on page two. And I had to keep going through like that. But also, um, there was some variance in the um, format of the page numbers. Sometimes there was page sp uh, P space A space G space E instead of just page. And so I had seven different strings to check for that were all variable. And so I, I had a lot of help from Matt, especially Jacob, Ahmed, Han, but um, that took me a full class to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I remember that day. Yeah. Um, all right, let's do feedback. Uh, who wants to go first? Um, I've, I've beaten this yet, so uh, I'll go first. This is also really, really cool. Uh, have you I'm, I'm sure you all know I'm a massive dork, so uh, I've, re I've read these books countless times. I've listened to the audio books. I've, I've, I've been on Pottermore. Uh, I'm What's your house? In somehow. Um, <laughs> oh no. I know I'm evil apparently. Not um, evil. I think you're the best house. Give <laughs> <laughs> start. Okay. Well, I like. I really, really enjoy, like. Everything on the internet. I, I, I'm looking forward to when this is put online because I, I actually think that, like, this is probably the best project I've seen so far. To like, if you made this open source, like, allowed people to go in, offer their analysis. Like, the Harry Potter community is just Perfect. extremely, <laughs> extremely dedicated, yeah. That's and awesome. they will build up this site to be something. Not, like it'll it it would be better than any other free open source site, and it's already looking yeah. superb. So like I would recommend making this open source. The only critique, and this isn't even really a critique, is that like I want even more about you on the about us page. Mm -hmm. um, like if you want. have an about us, crack, yeah. please crack. We were thinking. Like, we were thinking about putting like what our each of our patronuses like, <laughs> oh, are wrong and stuff. Definitely. But people will love that. The text just kind of like looked at the time when I was doing it. The text looked weird with the image, so yeah. Yeah. left it off for now. But yeah, it's an ever evolving project. Yeah, we're is. gonna keep working yeah. on it. Well, After a short break, because Paul needs to get some sleep, he was heavy on D three and he. I, he's gonna sleep for thirty six hours tomorrow. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I fell asleep at four thirty. I come from the other end of the spectrum. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not such a big um, Harry Potter fan. But even then, I was pretty wrapped in the entire time, and I don't think you guys lost my interest for a single moment. And that's pretty impressive, I think. Um, and I think this project is kind of it's it's deceptively super um, simple in that there's a lot of descriptive dimensions that um, that's not readily apparent. I've read the first.
first one. And then it was fifth grade. This is my story. I, I had a public speaking thing in fifth grade. First time I ever had to speak in public. It was an awful presentation. And after that, I never read another book. <laughs> <laughs> you should um, read them now because of our project. Yeah, right. But I, I, mean, this is, I don't really have much feedback. It was just packaged yeah, extremely just... well. I mean, I think for two weeks, you guys were getting very close to failure because our project was like, you need absolutely the public needs to be used by a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to give anything that I can think to improve it. I just, yeah, but I would, I have, that's really about my. Oh, I have, I have an improvement. Yeah, actually make thing. that swag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, Watch out for copy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that's yeah. a yeah. nice yeah. looking. Is it? Yeah. Like, that's a nice it, looking. It looks amazing. Like, brand I, right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, the logo is just using an SVG. It's just those lines Wait, and. That's an SVG? That it's it's an SVG with lines and an ellipse and then a path yeah, for the lightning bolt. Dude, no. that's yeah. even cooler. When yeah, it's like that. it's like ten lines of code. I thought oh, you coded that thing. Yeah, yeah I coded yeah. it. That was that was not Photoshop. That was just uh, HTML. Wow. He sent it in Slack and I, I like passed out for a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.